Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing, and today we reach the concluding part of our mini series, Traditional Chinese Weaponry. Official records state that more than a hundred types of weapons are used in Chinese martial arts. They range from the bow and arrow, which makes it possible to attack the target from a great distance, to swords and daggers, cudgels and spears for fighting at close quarters. Traditionally, though, swords and daggers are regarded as the most important martial arts weapons. But history shows that weapons have had to adapt and change. A case in point is the mace developed to combat soldiers wearing armor. The mace first appeared in China during the Sui Dynasty, two dynasties prior to the Song Dynasty. It is known that General Qin Chong used two maces as his weapons, but during the Song Dynasty, the mace was very commonly used. This Song Dynasty era mace weighs 2.5 kilograms and is about 90 centimeters long. It is made of iron so that it will not break easily, and it features. A beautiful handle. If the mace was a light weapon used to attack soldiers wearing suits of armor, then the hammer was a heavy weapon intended to kill an enemy instantly. The Peking opera Eight Hammers tells of Yue Fei's army battling Jin troops. According to the story, Yue Fei's son, Yue Yuan, and three other generals of the Yue army used eight hammers, known among Song soldiers as Gu Duo. A Gu Duo consists of a shaft and a polyhedric hammer. However, most of the ghoul doors available today have a round hammer. Although the Song dynasty went to great efforts to develop weapons, it imposed strict controls on their use outside of the military. Song laws barred civilians from possessing weapons other than double and single-edged swords and anyone found guilty of possessing illegal weapons would be sentenced to one and a half years of hard labor. Song officials were required to closely monitor the possession of weapons in order to safeguard the regime. However, According to the classic novel, The Water Margin, they weren't able to prohibit certain heroes from possessing such weapons. One of those heroes was Hu Yan Zhuo, known for using a pair of steel rods as weapons. A rod is like a club, and while a mace has edges and corners, a rod is round and smooth. But as a rod didn't have a sharp edge like a sword, a soldier had to be very strong indeed to use it effectively. One of Hu Yan's rods weighed 6 kilograms and the other 6.5 kilograms. A 
Another hero described in the water margin is Li Kuei, who uses a battle axe. He is said to be as strong as an ox. The battle axe is another of the 18 most commonly used ancient heavy weapons. This highly lethal weapon has a thick back and a sharp cutting edge. In the water margin, Xu Ning is a general who uses barbed lances. Barbed lances originated from halberds, and they were made by turning the cutting edges of the halberd inwards. Although this was a change that first appeared in the Tang dynasty, barbed lances were used much more commonly in the Song dynasty. During the Song dynasty, Xu Ning destroyed the government's armoured cavalry using barbed lances, and after he and his Liang Shan brothers were offered amnesty and enlistment, the government paid great attention to barbed lances and then issued them as standard military weapons. According to Outline of Military Science, there were three kinds of barbed lances. It is known that later, UFA wiped out the cavalry of the state of Jin using these barbed lances. During the Song Dynasty, the staff was widely used by civilians, partly because materials for making the staff could be readily found and the weapon could be either long or short. The staff soon became a favourite among civilian martial arts practitioners. Although the staff was a simple weapon, it was effective because it could be used easily and in a great variety of ways. During the Song Dynasty, the staff became the symbol of a constable catching an offender. In the water margin, both the policemen who escort Lin Chung to prison and supervisory official Wu Song carry the staff when they perform official duties. And although the water margin is a novel, what it tells us about the use of the staff in the Song Dynasty is certainly accurate.这个就是传说里的抓记得古龙小说里边有一对神奇的兵器啊the Song Dynasty, despite its superb weapons, was actually very weak militarily. Its forces, in constant fighting with various ethnic minorities, lost one battle after another. As a result, Song suffered the indignity of having to give up territory and pay indemnities. Zhao Kuangyin is because he has been able to win the war and win the war. 所以他很注意这个问题The year 1555 saw battles between Ming troops and Japanese pirates in coastal areas of Zhejiang province. When Ming troops lost their first battle, 
It was due in part to the fact that the highlands in the area made it difficult to deploy troops. But, to a greater extent, it was because Ming troops had inferior weapons. Why was it that Japanese swords which originated in China had become so effective? After Chinese swords were introduced to Japan, the country had worked hard to improve them for hundreds of years. In Japan, each sword was made by an individual family specializing in sword making, whereas in the China of the Ming Dynasty, swords were looked upon more as ordinary weapons. As a result, the swords used by Ming troops were cheap, poorly made, and used inferior steel. When a man by the name of Qi Ji Guang began to take charge of the defense of Zhejiang in the year 1556, he enlisted soldiers from coastal areas, trained them under strict conditions, and founded the famous Qi Army. In addition, he improved the weapons used by Ming troops so that they could better fight the Japanese pirates. Si Qi Ji Guang had his men cut five meter lengths of bamboo with their branches still attached, and he then had iron heads affixed to them. These weapons were known as Lang Xian spears, and they were just like long spears, and they could hit an enemy five meters away. When Japanese pirates came up against these Lang Xian spears, they had difficulty driving them back. He wanted to 我相信这个沃克刀法很好According to historical records, Qi Ji Guang fought the Japanese pirates in southeast China for 10 years. In the year 1566, he finally wiped them out and became a national hero. During the Ming and Qing dynasties, Chinese martial arts developed quickly. A full range of martial arts techniques appeared, and a large number of different martial arts schools were founded. The most famous weapon of Shaolin Temple is the staff. The monks of Shaolin Temple began to use the staff from around the time martial arts appeared at the temple. As Shaolin Temple is Buddhist and its monks follow Buddhist teachings, Iron weapons of war, such as swords, spears and halberds, were never used. The wooden staff was the only weapon deemed acceptable. Naturally, Shaolin Temple developed comprehensive skills in the use of this weapon. The Wudang School of Martial Arts, on the other hand, is built largely around the use of the sword. 
Wu Dang swordsmanship was first developed in the Ming Dynasty by the prominent Taoist Zhang Sanfeng on the basis of Taoist culture and ideology. Wu Dang swordsmanship is designed to conquer the unyielding with the yielding and restrict activity through quietness. The representative weapon of the Er Mei School of Martial Arts is the Er Mei Dagger. Er Mei Daggers were based on the design of hairpins, but developed into daggers wielded in pairs using both hands. Er Mei Daggers are truly awesome weapons. In the year 1644, the Qing army conquered the parts of China that had up to that time not been brought under the empire's rule. The eight banner soldiers of the Qing army excelled with the broadsword and spear in an era that saw traditional Chinese weapons reach an unprecedented level of excellence. However, after the Qing army conquered the rest of China, social disturbances became increasingly serious and anti-Qing societies sprung up from one end of the country to the other. These societies promoted martial arts as a means to fight against the Qing government, and it was said they commonly used hidden weapons. Now it's quite common in martial arts movies for the hero to produce a weapon out of thin air, with which he deals a fatal blow to his enemy. Surely though, such hidden weapons never really existed. Or did they? Uh,比如秀剑啊,等等,和这飞刀啊,还有什么标啊。in works of fiction, the cruelest hidden martial arts weapon is the Xue Di Zi Dart, which is depicted as a weapon used to kill from a long distance. But in reality, there never was such a weapon. There was, however, the Qian Kun Ring, the hidden weapon that comes closest to the fictional Xue Di Zi Dart. A Qian Kun ring weighs about 2 kilograms and is covered with thorny spikes. It is said that similar rings were used by Mongolian cavalrymen. The Mingjian Wushu Jama is a very strong rule. It is a very strong rule. It is a very strong rule. It is a very strong rule. 中国武林的传统。只有一些所谓小说中描写的陆林人物啊,那么他们用 Hidden weapons don't appear in the list of the 18 most commonly used traditional martial arts weapons. However, it seems hidden weapons did to a certain extent become a part of traditional Chinese weapons. Historically, there were weapons such as hidden darts and flying cutters, but today, none of them can be seen. This is Beijing Sports University, China's top sports university. Among the traditional weapons still being mastered here today are bows and arrows as used in ancient times. But we can also see China's oldest hidden weapon in use, the slingshot. Today they're no longer used as weapons, of course, but they do feature in martial arts performances. At one time in history, the slingshot was an effective hidden weapon. A slingshot is a hand-powered projectile weapon first developed for hunting. Unlike arrows, which make a whooshing sound as they fly through the air, the round projectile that flies from a slingshot travels quietly toward its target. As slingshot projectiles didn't announce they were on their way, they were often used in surprise attacks or for self-defense purposes.
During the Qing dynasty, firearms took on an increasingly important role, and traditional Chinese weapons became less important in battle. As a result, many double and single-edged swords were diverted to the civilian sector, where they became important once again in martial arts. Today, these traditional Chinese weapons are favorites among collectors. This is the home of Huang Fujiang. Huang has collected several ancient Chinese weapons, but behind one rather ordinary-looking sword in Huang's collection is a truly extraordinary story. The sword in Huang's hand was an ordinary sword used by an officer in the last years of the Qing dynasty, but it bears two surprising words, kill demons. Zhang 称之为魔,称之为鬼。But this sword was a symbol of the weakness of traditional Chinese weapons in the later period of the Qing dynasty. Following the Opium War, many generals and soldiers of the Qing dynasty called foreign invaders demons, and they had the words kill demons inscribed on their swords. They then tried to use these swords to defeat the Westerners, but the swords were, of course, no match for Western firearms. In the end, traditional Chinese weapons that had been used for thousands of years had to give way to the more powerful firearms. swords of ancient China, the Wan Shou broadswords of the Han Dynasty, and the swords manufactured during the reign of Qing emperors Kangxi and Qianlong are among the very finest weapons produced in the ancient world. Ancient Chinese weapons have a long and glorious history. Although they aren't used in battle today, traditional Chinese weapons, especially double and single-edged swords, are still the favorite weapons of martial arts practitioners and collectors of ancient artifacts. Traditional Chinese weapons are an important part of traditional Chinese culture, and today they continue to enrich China's martial arts. The recent Chinese box office hit, Red Cliff, featured many of the cult weapons that were used in the Three Kingdoms period. The film provoked a storm of interest in traditional Chinese weaponry, not only in China itself, but also around the world. In fact, the film has spawned a highly profitable business, making reproduction weapons. It's a sign of how the ancient weapons of China retain their romantic appeal. And thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Ji Xiaojun from CCTV International. Goodbye.